This is a short presentation on the foundations of a meditative practice. If you'd like to have greater detail, you can just follow the links and you can receive those um, in detailed hours long videos on each of the four stages. But here's a quick overview and it will help people to really understand and enter into a structure which will support the inner training and the inner development. The first stage, restfulness of soul, is the stage of which most people come to after doing a meditation. And that means that after their meditative practice, they, put, they have put their everyday self, their everyday attachments and thoughts and feelings and orientation to the external world or to the internal worries to one side. But really to start a meditative practice with putting that to one side at the beginning is the most advantageous for your growth and development. That means that the actual meditative practice can really carve the inner forces and strengthen the inner life because that's its intention. So we begin with step one, restfulness of soul, where we place to one side our everyday self. Those of you that are following the virtue practices will notice that each time there is a restfulness of soul exercise and this restfulness of soul deepens and develops according to your capacity so it grows along with you. Now there are many different exercises for restfulness of soul and one of those archetypes is to use a word of power like resting or peace. Now with a word of power you're not just getting a idea, a, a word that is a thought but it induces or can help if, as you drink it in to create the mood. So if you were to take the word, a word that for you conjures up the capacity to bring a deep resting of soul. Now this is not a rest as in what you do between things, it's a state of being. So peace is a state of being, tranquility as a state of being. So choosing one of those words that you can really resonate with and in not just thinking the word but trying to become the power of the word, it helps to put our everyday self to one side. So we begin this meditative practice and there are various ways to do this but with this simple technique of choosing a word of power that we know speaks to us of a deep place of resting away from the exterior away from even the worries of the interior world that are in relationship to the external world and instead turning inward and bringing our activity to a quietness, to a peacefulness, to a tranquil state. Now for some that will be a hard thing to achieve because they haven't yet learnt to take away their soul draw into the world outside and all their thoughts and feelings being attached to the external. But you would still pass on to the next stage of meditation because, as I've already mentioned, that even if you can't achieve restfulness of soul to begin with, the actual steps of meditation will help to achieve that. But the meditative purpose is to do more than that. So we first start with restfulness of soul. The next step is to take a verse or some words or a sign of the path that engages the soul into something that does not belong to the sense world. I've mentioned this in the I will make my way to the spirit come hella high water. 
these words used, wisdom lives in the light, is not a reality of the sensory world, but, but is a reality of the eternal. But we are going to use a verse that is archetypal to what you're trying to engage with first in your meditative practice. First of all, we want to encounter the reality of our being that is not this personal, everyday self. The second self, the higher self, the eternal self, the spirit self. It has many names and from many traditions, but it has this quality of the true self when you connect with it. Now, in this verse, which is archetypal, <clears throat> you can see that it is adjusting the soul's understanding of self. And here it is. More radiant than the sun, purer than the snow, finer than the ether is the self. Spirit in my heart, I am this self. This self am I. Now you can hear in this verse, this is verse that has been adapted through the ages, that it has an eternal truth about it. You know, who you are today, what you've become, all of the identities that you have are transitory. Next incarnation, very different. But this picture that arises out of the eternal, that belongs to the eternal, and these first meditative exercises truly need to arise out of these images that come from the schooling so that you can begin to build this relationship. More radiant than the sun, purer than the snow, finer than the ether is the self. Spirit in my heart, I am this self, this self am I. Now how we work with a verse is that all of your thoughts, your feelings and your intentions engage in this one verse. So you try not to allow your mind to waft anywhere, not to allow your mind to associate. And because you have a, a, a content to hold to, you have something to engage with that will strengthen your ability to move away from that sensory tendency and more towards this eternal inner experience. Now when you're working with a verse like this, it has many reflections back on the human being. It allows you to um, begin to experience this second self. Now there are many other verses and for comparison I will speak out a different verse so that you can hear it's still moving towards that same quality but from a slightly different direction. In purest outpoured light shimmers the Godhead of the world. In purest love towards all that is, outpours the Godhood of my soul. I rest within the Godhead of the world. There shall I find myself within the Godhead of the world. Sometimes it's very useful to compare the verses because then you get a sense of this direction that it's leading you towards. And of course this myself is not the personal particular self. It is the I consciousness, the I amness, the I beingness, the eternal beingness. And this again grows by degree over working with inner development. So the first step, put the everyday self to one side. Let go of that identity of self. The second step, 
build a relationship to the true self. Now there are many other exercises. Some of those exercises will give you um, inner pictures of what is transforming on the growth and path of inner development. But let's start with just this simple form, restfulness of soul, then the direction of which we're trying to work with, a verse that comes out of the eternal that leads the soul and feeds the soul towards eternal experience. Now comes the next step. This is actually something that some will find hard to do to begin with, but it is something I'd still try, even if you've found that you've not quite developed the first step of restfulness of soul, not quite yet able to put all of your activity into the verse so that you're immersed in it and that nothing else exists in your interior world except for the verse and that you're thinking, feeling and and willing those words with fullness. The next step is to extinguish the content of the verse in the sense that you stop thinking the words, you stop willing that verse through your inner world but rather you're now holding the activity, the inner activity with the intention that you would have with the power that you are giving the verse but now you're not giving it to the verse, you're just still holding that inner activity that you've created now, this is not an easy thing to explain. Imagine yourself looking at a, a flower or a plant and you're really looking out to this object in front of you and then you close your eyes and you're no longer seeing but you continue to look, to continue the activity as though you're looking. So here we are, we've built the verse, we've had the content of the verse and now we extinguish that but we still stay just as active inwardly. Now this is the third step. It's activity without content and this is a really important part of the meditative practice. Now when someone has cultivated a relationship to this they will find themselves in a way in this inner space where there's no content but they are completely present to it. However, they will often describe feeling that they're in a kind of room or there is a limitation to this space. They're active, they're present to the nothing, they're present to the nothing, to the active, and they're active in that space, but they're still in this limited consciousness. So the next step is to try to extinguish also the activity. It's almost as though the point within of which your concentration is focused actually moves now into the periphery and your consciousness moves with that beyond the walls, beyond the limitation and there is the possibility of something else shifting and taking place. And the self of me no longer exists, cannot exist in that experience. But you still have consciousness. Now at each of these steps of the meditation, the four steps, the restfulness of soul, the engagement with the eternal through content, extinguishing the content but staying active and then extinguishing the activity, each of these steps has various degrees of experience within them. 
You don't need to be complete in one to follow on to the next. But as you continue with your meditative practice, you'll find that they will all become enriched. And eventually, the restfulness of soul will become something that is easy, that you can turn within. The verse will feel like you're meeting a dear friend. Your whole internal world responds. The activity will become the extinguishing, but with the activity will become an oasis. And if you can hold that experience for 15 minutes, you will feel rejuvenated as though you've had four hours sleep. And if you're able to go to the final extinguishing, then you will meet new realms of being.